Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I hope most of you would have noticed that Windows 11 is finally launched and with it comes two security requirements. One is TPM 2.0 and one is Secure Boot. Now what is Secure Boot? Secure Boot is a protocol that checks that the software and hardware you are using is verified to run. For example, if your computer gets infected with any loot kit, okay, you are using Windows, you clicked on any link, and then it injected you, it injected your operating system with some loot kits, okay. Then your computer, it will try to boot when your computer boots up, but your computer won't allow it to boot. Why? Because it has secure boot. Until and unless it gets a verified signature, your computer won't boot it. <clears throat> but Windows can normally boot up. So you won't notice any problem while booting up Windows, but those virus and loot kits will have a hard time. So secure boot is very good in these areas and protects your computer and you from many bad practices. But it comes at a cost, Linux. Yes, if you are using Linux, then it's very hard to use with secure boot sometimes. Now some distributions like I think Ubuntu and Debian solve that issue and can boot uh, even after secure boot is on most of the time. But still, if you can't boot up, if you have like me, an Arc Linux based distro like I have it over here, Gnu Linux, or some of you like to say it, Garuda Linux, then it has a problem that it can't boot with secure boot. And many Arc based distros have the same problem because Arc dropped the secure boot uh, compatibility early on in the day. So today we will see how we can solve that in Arc Linux. So follow me up. So first of all, what you want to do is open any terminal of your choice so we have like i have electricity console tilex gnome terminal whatever you want so for this demonstration i will use tilex it's one of my favorite terminals and then what you want to do is install a package and uh, the commands change depending on what distribution you are using for me it's sudo pacman dash s and shim sign now it won't show up here because it has a very lengthy name. So if it doesn't show up, then you can just open your package manager. For me, it's a Mac. And then you can just type over here, shim signed. Uh, over here, shim signed will show up. Okay, so as you can see over here, shim signed, and this is its uh, all the numbers. This is an AUR package. So you should have AUR enabled for me. Uh, my AUR is inbuilt, inbuilt into pacman command but if it doesn't then you can use something like Leoart or there are many uh, AUR helpers that you can use. So once shim is installed then what you can do simply is go over here into any browser that you like okay and the best thing about Arc Linux is that, is that they have a very good AUR but you don't have to be an Arc Linux user to use that a uh, to use their documentation you can use that on any distribution you so what i will do is i will just go to your a you are or i will just type uh linux and uh, we will check uh shim package you go over here and uh, this one we we'll go to secure boot section and this if you go down a bit okay then we should have shim over here somewhere setup shim okay so you can see there are all the commands that you will need so once shim is installed what you need to do is that go to your terminal as you did before and you can just remove this command open as your root user now how to do that just press sudo space su so sudo super user now enter your password my very lengthy password and then you can just open any of your file manager for me it's not less if you are on kde then dolphin sometimes have problems dolphin can't run with uh, root privileges so you can use any other uh, file manager of your choice unless you have lots of choices now you just need to go to a file system boot efi and here is the here is this now efi is this drive that is mounted over here you need to just see over here then boot you would have only one file called 
boot x64 okay i have to because i have already set up shim over here but what you need to do is that you have to go over here create a tab rename the boot x64.efi to grub x64.efi like this and then what you need to do is go to file system and the exact part of it is user share shim signed so you need to have it installed so we will just go over here to user share and then over here somewhere we will have shim okay so here it's shim okay now what you need to do is that we have to just copy this shim x64 dot efi paste it over here and rename it to boot x64 dot efi okay first step was rename boot x64 dot efi to grub x64 dot efi then copy this shim x64 dot efi and rename it to boot x64 dot efi okay and then copy this mm x64 dot efi over here so you will have now these three files okay this boot x64 dot efi will boot up shim shim once verified it will verify all the signatures for you to uh, boot into secure uh, to boot with secure boot it will then use grub x64 efi to boot up your grub screen as you know grub is used to dual boot and to boot linux it will boot this grub screen and mm x64 efi is to open the mock manager so that if there is no verified signature right now then it will boot up mock manager so you can verify the signatures i will show you how to do it in a bit because that's one of the first that we have to do once all of that done you see over here we have to copy this boot x64.efi to grub x64.efi then we have to copy the boot this shim x64 efi and make it boot x64.efi and same with mm x64.efi just copy it like that once that is done what we will do is we will do control c okay uh, let's just close this window and we'll stop then what you need to do is you have to again go to your root environment and here you have to do something okay you have to do this efi boot manager if you don't have it installed then i think you can install it with uh, any of your package manager and it's a very good command you should have it in your distribution you have to type this whole command okay just copy this command and paste that right so this is actually a beta build of microsoft edge so it sometimes have some problems so you just need to paste this command this efi boot manager command and you have to change some things over here okay so what you have to change first before doing this you have to do f disk dash l okay and will list all your disks so you can see over here that which disk is your efi partition for me it's this one dev slash sdb2 okay you can see over here it's written efi partition or what you can do for easiness is go to disks uh, you should have this all g parted you would have some sort of software if, if you don't have then you can install it very easily and you can see i have some windows partitions and here i have this partition which is mounted as slash wood slash efi which we just saw uh, it is zinus slash dev slash sda2 and it's a efi pa system partition so what you need to do is now paste the command and change this dev slash sdx to sda okay like it's written over there and change the part y to part 2 and then create label shim don't change that it doesn't matter uh, if you want you can change it also it's completely your choice and then at the end make this a bit different so what we will do is that we will do slash boot <coughs> slash efi slash okay, slash efi slash efi slash boot okay your folder name could be in some cases different so always check what is yours name because sometimes it can be different and it won't work if the names are different. 
so let me see the name in mind okay I'll close that so here it is you have to write this whole command down and then just press enter I won't do it because I've already done that so I won't do it but it would run completely fine once it does then the next steps are going to be done in BIOS so I will see you there okay now as you can see we are in the BIOS now in the BIOS you have to change some settings okay so first on my BIOS you can see my BIOS is MSI click BIOS 5 but yours can be different so you have to see where the setting lies in your BIOS in mine you can see over here there is one option called Windows WHQL support first of all you have to turn that on okay it will disable CSM uh, that is for legacy support and it also uh, makes it UEFI only and also turns on some settings which are needed for secure boot to work and if you don't have this option then uh, you can manually do that by changing UEFI press legacy to only UEFI and disabling CSM then as you can see uh, my BIOS has a search option I will go there and search for secure boot now once I have uh, searched for secure boot you can see over here there are two options for me secure boot mode and secure boot okay so what I will do is at first I will try to enable secure boot to enable okay secure boot control to enable but it doesn't work for me so what I had to do was to change the secure boot mode to first to save uh, to custom then once it's set to custom you will again set it to standard it will say to load defaults we have to click on yes and then you can finally enable secure boot control and then you can just uh, go to your boot settings in my case it's over here in settings and boot and change your boot order okay your uh, UEFI BBS priorities and change the first option to the shim option this one we set with the EFI boot manager so whatever name you uh, define there that should be the first boot choice then the second or third can be anything that you want so mine is first shim then grub and then is windows so you can do anything you want till shim is the first choice now for the last steps the steps in which you have to set the keys and point it to your grub loader I will link a video down in the description and in the comment section because it uh, has it in a very good detail so you can just check it out there i can't record there with obs so i would just link it thank you for watching have a nice day